So as I mentioned when we started, I'm going to talk a bit today about absence of self, which is one of the three components that I look for confirming if someone's presenting and either they or I suspect there's been a Kensho experience, an awakening experience. The first is a deep sense of absence of self. So this would be, obviously I'm using the word deep rather than something that's cursory or more shallow. So it needs to be a sustained sense of absence of self. There also needs to be a quality and experience of unity, of the oneness of love. And that has to include us. So it can't be that we're perceiving, we're only perceiving a oneness of love. We have to be perceiving a oneness of love that is part of our fabric as well. And then finally, there needs to be a recognition that this is my true identity. And this meaning the deep absence of the absolute and the pure love, unity, and oneness of the absolute. So those both need to be in attendance and also there needs to be that recognition. So sometimes that language can show as it's the absolute awakening to itself in a particular consciousness. So the absence of self is really an important component to this process. And it's the one that is probably likely to give us the most challenge. We're very accustomed to self-referencing. If we were at a public event, a social event, in person, and people walked up to you and say, well, who are, who are you? You would normally start off with name and a variety of statistics, where you live, what you do for a living. If you're retired, what did you used to do? Um, could be age, could be a variety of things that you share, all of which point to a sense of a self. And the absence of self as we turn into contact these markers of me and we don't find them. They're absent. When this first happens, most of us quickly reassert the sense of self, particularly the self-talk. The self-talk is that inner narration as we move through life, expressing internally the likes and dislikes. I like that car, I don't like that tree. By doing this throughout our day, we reify our sense of self based upon our preferences. I want to start first with reading to you the first stanza of Trust and Awakening. That's the most recent book I've had published. It's a retranslation of the Zing Zing Ming. And then I provide commentary as well to the stanzas. So the first stanza of Trust and Awakening, The Great Way is Effortless, with no preferences. Surrender, desire, and aversion. Clarity dazzles. So we start right away, the first line of the poem, Trust and Awakening, the great way is effortless. The great way refers to our spiritual path, the completeness of that. And here I'm saying the great way is effortless. If something is effortless, there's no doer. There's no one with a sense of I'm starting here and I'm ending there. So there's no distance to be traveled. There's no, there's no uh, benefit to get. So that raises the question is what does it mean to have effort? And then who has effort? And further on in the stanza with no preferences, the great way is effortless with no preferences. So if we don't have preferences, then the effort part is minimized. It's also assuming in this stanza 
that there is some quality of absence of self. When absence of self is present, effortless is commensurately absent as well, or minimized as well. And we do this by surrendering desire and aversion, the things we want, the things we don't want. <laughs> 